It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For today's video, we're going to react to the trailer for Primos, which basically is a new Disney show that's going to be coming out really soon about a Mexican-American family and the struggles with the cousins within that family. Now, before we react to the context of the whole entire trailer, it's very important to actually provide background on the why this show is being made in the first place. From what I can tell so far, it seems to know that this show is being created by a person named Natasha Klein. According to this article that's been done by Deadline, it says right here that Disney branded television has ordered Primos, an original animated comedy series created and executive produced by Natasha Klein, director of Big City Green South Park. The story is based upon Klein's childhood experiences with her extended multicultural Mexican-American family. No network has announced it as of yet. Each half-hour episode of Primos, produced by Disney Television Animation, will be comprised of two 11-minute stories featuring Tatter, an electric 10-year-old girl with big dreams and unbeknownst to her, a certain it factor that makes her exceptional. With her 12 cousins, Primos in Spanish, move in for the summer, they help her discover what it is. Tater's inspiration and larger in life imagination are seen via the entries in her super secret diaries, which are her deepest thoughts into the grandiose animation sequences. In other words, it seems as though that this TV show is coming from a perspective from a child of immigrants that came to this country and not necessarily representing a Latin American country. It just only represents her own personal experience as a Mexican American. So what exactly are some of the elements that people find problematic for this trailer? There are two major things that I noticed in the first shot of the trailer. The first thing is that it's actually entirely yellow for the whole entire sequence. And number two, that for the billboard, it actually says Teddy Moto Heights. First and foremost is an ongoing joke at this point that Hollywood almost always used the yellow filter to portray Mexico or Mexican Americans. This happens in almost every other movie. And so I think it's actually not a good idea <laughs> to portray, I guess in this case, California with a yellow filter or not use the filter at all. But the second thing is really interesting because the word that's being used for terremoto literally means like an earthquake. And I'm guessing, I'm assuming, <laughs> the joke is that because, like, you know, California has many earthquakes, that's why it's called Earthquake Heights. And so I guess that's the base, like, the joke of the whole entire punchline for what's happening in the trailer. <laughs> When it came down to the initial reaction to this trailer, it seemed as though that many Latinos, both on YouTube and on social media, were upset that they used a grammatically incorrect phrase for that particular phrase, hey cousins. This comment on Instagram says, it had been nice to prove we all of this. Oye primos is so wrong, it would have been organ primo or oye primo. Gringos at it again. Hey, I've been really wanting to delete your comment because it's really rude to the American diaspora Latinos. This is the exact reason why we're ashamed to speak our mother language and carry on the Latino tradition. It's bad enough that we're already picked on and made it feel less than by the country we live in because of the customs and traditions we carry from our Latino roots. I'm going to leave it up so people can see that rudeness is not strictly an American issue. Language is fluid and trajectory depending on where you live and who you learn it from. I, the writers, know the creator of this beautiful show, do not approve our Latini dad to you or any grammar Nazi on the internet. You're welcome not to watch the show, but rest assured if you're being rude to anyone, I will call it out. As you guys can see, the comment that came directly from the voice actress was not that very nice. It came across as, you can say, very condescending. To fully understand the context on why certain Spanish phrases and words are being misspelled in the show, I saw the first part of Primos on TikTok of all places. Now this particular clip comes directly from the pilot episode. <laughs> Welcome, 
Bienvenidos. Oh, wise, all-knowing older sister. You spelled that wrong. Oh, thank you, Nelly, my darling little sis. Now please get out of my super private diary. <laughs> Anyways. As you guys can see the context of that clip, it seems as though that her not knowing Spanish is actually an ongoing joke throughout the show. Largely because it seems as though in terms of data that many people who are Mexican descent who are born in the United States don't necessarily know Spanish words or phrases or talk Spanish at all. And so it seems as though that that show is not necessarily coming from a perspective of somebody who's fully fluent in Spanish, but rather somebody who's actually a daughter of immigrant parents, and that's why she tends to spell things wrong. Another major criticism for this trailer was the fact for the little girl, they call the little girl Coquita. Now Coquita is a derivative of the word Chucha, and Chucha, depending on the context, and depending on what Spanish-speaking country you're coming from, has many different meanings. For example, it talks about a caterpillar. It talks about a woman who likes to gamble. It could talk about a penis. It could talk about a cookie in Colombia. Now in Colombia, Dominican Republic, as well as Venezuela, it refers to a vagina. Now it's also derivative of the word cucaracha, and cucaracha refers to a cockroach. Now at first glance, it looks really terrible that they're calling a little girl vagina. But listen guys, context is key. The context is that the creator of the show is coming directly from a Mexican-American family. And for Mexico, the word chucha is not necessarily a vagina. For example, my followers from Mexico tell me this is actually a common nickname for people who are named Refugio or Maria de Refugio to be called Chucha. In other words, in the context of a Mexican-American family, Chucha is referring to Refugio, is not necessarily referring to a vagina. And so it's very, very important to actually know the context on how people are using the words depending on the Spanish-speaking country because sometimes the same words have different meanings depending on where you live in the Spanish-speaking country. Now, one of the voice actresses again made this video on social media that many people got really upset about. The Spanish language is not a Latin American language. It's a language the Spanish conquistadors forced upon Latin American people. The only reason we're Latin people and not Native American people is because of that distinction. The issue of colonization is a very heavy topic, largely because the beginnings of Spanish colonization in the Americas has been incredibly rough. I'm not going to deny that. Largely because when Christopher Columbus went to Española, what happened was that basically he had like a lot of people that died in his path and it was so bad that Queen Isabella decided to force him out of Hispaniola to not make sure that any more bad things actually happened. That being said, Spanish did in fact coexist with the native languages of the Americas. As a matter of fact, the Spanish went out their way to write entire dictionaries to preserve the native languages. Now this image right here is a dictionary that was made in 1571 for the Spanish language and the Nalic language. This is also a dictionary that came directly from 1560 that has Spanish and Quechua in the dictionary. Additionally, we also know that many members of the clergy learn indigenous language so that to be more accessible and understandable to those who want to convert to their religion, they even select the indigenous language to be used as a lingua franca in areas that have linguistic diversity. Additionally, the Spanish made entire universities for both the natives there and the Spanish people. The Spanish also made sure that interracial marriage was actually legalized before the United States became a country. And so I don't see evidence so far 
that the Spaniards tried to suppress the native languages for Spanish, I don't see no such historical evidence in the slightest. In conclusion, it seems as though that the intro for this TV show has overreactions from both sides of the aisle. On one side, it seems as though that the creators of the show are very much condescending towards criticism of the show, and on the other side, it seems as though that the other people that are reacting to the show about the grammatical mistakes in Spanish are not necessarily researching the elements or the context on why the Spanish words are misspelled. And so it seems as though that I'm hoping that for this video, everything is now cleared up now. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.